Welcome to the Devil Row Committee of Pro Wrestling, presented by the Idiot Radio Network, offering a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling with guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devil. We are back, Stephon Devereaux, the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Wrestling fans, it's TLC Sunday, and we have a jam-packed show. I can't wait to talk to you this afternoon. I love you guys. I missed you guys. You know, I had a lot of things going on. I was named the Assistant Program Director for the Idiot Radio Network, and that's where I want to start off. This show, I want to start off the show by saying thank you so much to the Idiot Radio Network for believing in yours truly, the boy, Stephon Devereaux, because I think we're going to, you know, we're going to do some things. We're going to do some serious things with the Idiot Radio Network. And, um, man, I just can't believe it. I really can't believe it. But it's TLC Sunday, and, um, <sighs> This is going to be one pay-per-view that uh, should be talked about for some, I'll say months to come, because you know how the uh, wrestling news cycle goes. You get a major story, it'll go for a couple months, and then it'll go away. We won't talk about it no more. But can you believe, can you believe what's happening right now in the WWE? Man, I can't believe it. I mean, so what's going on back there? What is going on in the, uh, that locker room? What's going on? I mean, come on. People are just popping up. But, you know, I've heard the mumps. Uh, they said it's a viral infection. Eww. Well, from what I'm understanding, according to the internet. And let's just have some fun with this stuff. Now, the three guys who was taken out of their, you know, major matches, uh, Roman Reigns. Remember Roman Reigns just brought the shield back? Yeah, that was going to be fun. Yeah, I love the shield. But Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt's younger brother. Man, See, here's the problem, and I, I, I want to get into this because I want to have some fun with this because, seriously, let's have some fun. Let's kick our heels up and have some fun. Now, these three men went down, same illness, rumors are mumps, but, hey, there's a chick involved from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have so much fun with this thing, but if, if, it, if the rumors were true for what I heard, then, you know what I'm saying? This will be so fun that, you know, to be talking about, but I can't do it. I want to do it so bad. But anyway, but let's get into the real story here. Oh man, what a way to open this show out. I don't know where my, my co-host Bud Cassidy is right now. Uh, he was supposed to be here. I don't know where he is, you know, from what I understand, Butt was supposedly training for his huge match uh, in the tag team tournament uh, in a couple of weeks. But we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's settle down. <laughs> okay, so Roman Reigns, uh, Bray Wyatt, you know, they both had huge matches, huge matches tonight. Uh, Bray Wyatt was supposed to take on Finn, ba- Finn Byler. I hate saying that name. Uh that was supposed to be a huge match. Now, the building, the, the way they built to it, the story, uh, it wasn't that good. You know, we had Bray Wyatt dressing up as his sister Abigail. And to be honest with you, I have a, oh, my goodness. I have a, a way to tell that story that would have been a lot better than what the WWE did over the past month and a half, two months. But anyway, so that match is not going to happen now. Bray Wyatt is out of that match. The Shield reunited. And remember, the Shield was going to take on the Miz, Taraj, and some other people. <laughs> That's the only way to say it because it just made this daggone match a cluster. But uh, the Miz 
and his guys, in my opinion, and this was going to be in the tables, letters, and chairs match. I thought they were going to uh, they were going to find a way to uh, make the Miz look strong, but their team was going to lose against Roman Reigns and the Shield. And I hate saying it like that, but that's what it feels like: Roman Reigns and the Shield. You know, because they only brought this thing back just so they can get him over. But anyway, um, that match is not going to happen now. Well, no, no, it's, got, no, no, it's going to happen, but the shield part of the match is not going to happen. Now. The shield. <sighs> it's not happening. WWE decided to get one of the best wrestlers, one of the best wrestlers off the bench. In my opinion, the greatest wrestler of all time. Kurt Angle. Yes, Kurt Angle is making his return to the WWE ring, the WWE ring tonight at TLC. He will be joining the Shield tonight to take on the Mr. Raj and some other guys. How do you feel about that? How do you truly feel about that? Do you feel good about that? Because I don't. I, I'm not happy about this. I am not happy about this. And the reason why I'm not happy about this is because uh, it's Kurt Angle. There was no true buildup. It was a tweet. They tweeted this just two days ago that he was going to be in this match. You're going to tell me you couldn't find someone else and save the return of Kurt Angle until next month's Survivor Series. Because we all know he was coming out of retirement. We knew that. Okay? So let's not talk about it. We knew that. But why not save it until Survivor Series? TLC is not like this huge pay-per-view for the WWE. The TLC match draws by itself. So why would they put Kurt Angle in it? Or are they just saying, hey, we're trying to uh, make the fans, you know, feel a little bit better about their purchase. Guess what? The fans don't purchase these pay-per-views. They purchase the network. And the network provides the pay-per-views. The network also provides other programming besides the pay-per-view. A lot of people like myself who get this network, we sometimes don't watch the pay-per-views, especially that night. Now, me, I'll watch it tonight because, you know, me and Bud Cassidy, you know, we do our, our pay-per-view prediction segments. But other than that, I don't care about this pay-per-view, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people don't care about it. You know why? Because we have some major things happening tonight. One being the top the number one rated show in all of television is back on tonight, their 100th episode. And they have built this thing up like it's must-see television. And that is The Walking Dead season premiere. The Walking Dead is back on tonight. Does the WWE honestly believe they're going to compete with The Walking Dead with their wrestling fans? Because if you look at the numbers, I'm going to say about 50 to 55 percent, maybe 60, of wrestling fans watch The Walking Dead. And then we got football on tonight. <sighs> Man, I don't get you, WWE. I truly don't get you. I don't get you. I mean, I truly don't. Why? Are you, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. So as a wrestling fan, I'm just going to say, and a, a Walking Dead fan, I'm just going to say, hey, guys. I'm not going to watch The Walking Dead when it comes on live tonight. I'm going to watch the pay-per-views because Kurt Angle's back. No. 
It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Am I supposed to really care enough as a Walking Dead fan to DVR it? And you know, we go on Facebook, we go on Twitter, and let everybody tell me what the hell is going on. While I'm supposedly supposed to watch this Kurt Angle return for TLC. But wait a minute. The WWE being as great as they are, they decided (laughs) to give us a little bit more. Now, besides Kurt Angle teaming up with the Shield, To take on the Mr. Raj minus one guy, Bo Dallas, and some other guys. Oh, okay, I'll tell you who the other guys are. I'm sorry. Kane and Braun Strowman and, uh, oh, goodness, Cesaro and Sheamus. But guess what? It, it's really about the Miz. The Miz is. Anyway. So besides the WWE saying, hey, let's just figure out a way to uh, – yeah, we, we lost Roman, so we got a great replacement. Let's give him Kurt Angle a month before one of their biggest pay-per-views of all time. Well, in the history of the WWE, one of their great pay-per-views. The four – fathers, as I used to call them back in the day. You had Survivor Series, you had Royal Rumble, you had WrestleMania, you had SummerSlam. Here we are, Survivor Series. And a month before, they gave us they gave us Kurt Angle and his shield. Okay, I know. We stop complaining about that. But they did give us something that I think might be interesting. And that is versus Ben Byler. Now, AJ Styles is replacing Bray Wyatt in this match. And thinking out loud, this match is going to save the show. This match, is, and now it's not going to keep those fans who are going to uh, wait until later to watch this pay per view. It's not going to make them start make them watch it live because they're going to be watching The Walking Dead. Or football. But those who are not watching, who, who don't watch the WWE at all, but they're big AJ Styles fans, they're big Finn Balor fans, you know, this is Bullet Club, baby. I think they'll tune in to see this match. So this match alone, AJ Styles taking on Finn Balor, I think that match is the match that's going to save this pay-per-view. We'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about TLC on the WWE Network tonight. But anyway, we got a jam-packed show. What I want you to do is give us a call, 347-308-8709. Now, I think I'm done bitching for this show so far. I mean, we got so much stuff going on in professional wrestling uh, behind the scenes that I can't talk about. I wish I could, but I can't. But the stuff that you're hearing about is pretty interesting, too. Uh, Before we go to a break, here's something I want to uh, bring up. What's going on with the ratings, guys? What's going on with the ratings? Come on. Yeah. Ratings have dipped just a little bit more again. Now, the ratings have been actually going up. But this past Monday night, Nah, they lost. They lost about 200,000 viewers uh, from the week before as the rating came in at 2.6 million uh, viewers for Raw, and that's for the three-hour show. Average 2.6 million, actually 2.7 million viewers. And uh, that's down from the week before of 2.9, almost 2.9 million Uh, That they had, which is interesting because they'll blame the baseball playoffs, which, yeah, but I go back to it again. If you have a good product in the WWE or on professional wrestling and on television, 
you people will watch that show before they watch sports, especially if they're diehard fans. And I remember when in '98 when McGuire and Sosa was uh, chasing a record, and you know it was back and forth, and a, a lot of fans, wrestling fans, they were so into the attitude error that was, you know, uh, starting to take off. And they were so into the NWO, which had been around for almost two years at that time. They, baseball fans, true baseball fans. Yeah. They cared about that, you know, McGuire and Sosa, but wrestling fans, not really. The wrestling fans didn't really get behind it. I mean, I remember looking at the ratings reports back then, uh, when I did the old Devereaux comedy show, I remember those ratings, the wrestling did not take a hit at all, at all. And if people don't, hey, I'll, we could bring this up on the next show. But it didn't take a hit at all. So them using the excuse of the baseball playoffs, oh, that's what, no, man, the product, it, it just wasn't there. Um, as far as SmackDown, SmackDown, they took a hit, but their hit wasn't as bad as Raw's. Uh, SmackDown lost about 100,000 uh, fans compared to the week before, uh, as they finished with uh, 2.3 rate, I mean, uh, 2.3 million viewers compared to the week before, which was uh, 2.4 and a half. So about 150,000. Uh, that's not bad. I mean, hey, it's the WWE SmackDown. Smash, they can, actually, Tuesday night. Hmm. Tuesday night. Yeah, uh, I get it. We're going to take a break here soon. Uh, we got a lot to talk about still as I'm looking through the format of the show. Uh, Jack Swagger. Dude, Jack Swagger. He's throwing shots at the WWE. What's up with that? Um, but you're listening to the Devereaux Committee here on the Idiot Radio Network. Give us a call at 347-308-8709. That's 347-308-8709. And we'll be right back after this break. For all your heating and cooling needs, service, and installation, contact our friends at Complete Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, 412-513-3001. Doesn't your family deserve Complete Comfort? Looking for a creative idea for meetings, business lunches, and special events? Call Spiels on Wheels, food truck, and catering, and take the stress away. For more information, call them at 724-244-9881 or on Facebook at facebook.com slash wheels. You're listening to Idiot Radio, taking it to the edge and back. Pizza and Gyro Express, 801 O'Neill Boulevard in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. For menus, coupons, specials, and catering info, visit our website at pizzaandgyroexpress.com. Order online or by phone at 412-672-2182. Don't forget about the lunch buffet and drink every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for just $10. The original Pizza and Gyro Express. Don't settle for anything less. We are back. Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. And I think I got through that first segment. Uh, <laughs> I think I got through it okay. The second segment? <laughs> I know I was bitching a little bit too much on that first one. I know, guys. I know. Uh, but Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger. The all-American, American Jack Swagger. He has some uh, interesting things to say about the WWE. Using independent professional wrestling in a way. Well, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let Jack Swagger, the all-American American, American, I'm going to let him tell you how it feels. And this is pretty interesting. Clip comes courtesy of the wrestling robber. Here we go. The all-American American. As he used to be. Dax Flagga. Now I'm new to the independent scene, but I've seen a trend arising and I wanted to speak on it. Whenever certain promotions run their bigger shows, especially around the holidays, WWE likes to come into the same market and run a show at the same time. 
This just happened with AML Wrestlecade in November. SmackDown is now running the same day and calling their show Starcade. This has happened on October 28th, the Wrestling Revolver, Tales from the Ring. NXT is now running the night before. Hmm. Coincidence? I mean, possibly. They do book their shows months and months ahead of time. But what is even more possible is that WWE saw the card for the Revolver and said, Oh, shit. That's a great roster. This is going to be a big show. Indies are hot. We should get some of that. We should try to sign all the indie talent to our brand so they can't compete with us. Now, I'm not here to talk shit. I'm sorry, I'm taking this personal, though. To me, this is a slap in the face. Typical WWE saying they're a bigger company and they could come into your market and push you around and run a show whenever they like. All right, so you want to compete, fine. Real wrestling fans, indie fans, it is time to stand up for independent wrestling. On October 28th, show your support. Come to the Wrestling Revolver and help us out draw the NXT show. And help the Revolver and all the other promotions in the same situation. Stand up for the indies. Okay, now look, Jack Swagger, oh, damn, oh, see now, I was a fan of Jack Swagger back in the day, I really was, I thought Jack Swagger had uh, a lot of talent, he wasn't what uh, the great Jim Ross would call a blue chipper, he wasn't a blue chipper, but he was a guy who uh, had a lot of potential, and I felt that, you know, the, um, the gimmick they did with he and Dutch Mantel was incredible. It was incredible. Uh, when they kind of broke it up, but I honestly felt that that was a great gimmick. Uh, he had a, some opportunities back then, and he was even a world champion at one time. So can't say that he, the kid didn't have opportunities. But um, right now, what I got out of that and what I got out of um, everything else that's going on uh, – in professional wrestling right now, I truly believe that the indie scene is hot again. Like, I don't want to, okay, let me, let me step back. Do I believe that we're going through a boom period again, the WCW boom period versus uh, WWE, uh, not boom period, excuse me, WWE versus WCW boom period. Do I think we're going through that again? No. I think it's a, kind of different. Uh, see, what's going on on the indie scene is we have a lot of talent out there, but we have uh, some former WWE stars who are now coming to the indie scene, and they're choosing to work on the indie scene and wrestle this talent. And what's happening is they're getting this talent over. Now, I'll go back um, a couple months ago here on his show. I brought up Joey Ryan and Mick Foley. When Joey Ryan or Mick Foley took the penis bump. And I was really disgusted because what I felt was at the time, Mick Foley didn't have to do that. You know, he could have gotten Joey Ryan over other ways, but I mean, it is what it is. But what I truly feel now is guys like Mick Foley, um, if they're using their star power to get guys over, I'm I'm all for it, but just not like that. So that leads me to my next guy, Cody, Cody Runnels, the Cody. (laughs) That's funny, the Cody. But uh, this is the Cody. Anyway. Here's a guy who's on the NDC. He left the WWE because he felt, according to him, that the WWE still looked at him as the 19-year-old kid who just, you know, came up. He was Dusty's son, uh, Dustin's little brother. They felt that he was just there. He was just there to make, I mean, have great matches 
And you know, stay in that that second top second tier maybe, but not he they didn't feel he was ready to get to that that next level. Now, here's the thing about Cody Rhodes. Cody Reynolds, whatever you want to call him. He's now on the indie scene. He's now wrestling for Ring of Honor. He is now one of the hottest wrestlers on the indie scene. And he's doing it his way. And I'm pretty sure he's getting paid a lot of money. Okay? Merchandise. I mean, the guy's over in Japan, too. Just think of the merchandise he's probably selling. Okay? And not to mention this girl's hot, too. But anyway, we won't bring that up right now. The guy's making a lot of money. So you see, if I'm a WWE star and I feel like I'm not getting what I need done, you know, I want to go to the next level and they're not helping me get there. What I honestly feel in my heart, if I was a WWE guy, I think I would have a better opportunity of making money elsewhere. I'm watching Cody Rhodes do it. I'm watching Jack Swagger do it. I'm watching Neville, who's about to do it. Now, I'm getting pumped up now. Why? Because I see money out there. I see a chance for me to go out here and st- and still do what I love to do, but make money doing it. I see <laughs> the one and only CM Punk doing it again. I see Daniel Bryan doing it again. Now, here's the thing. They're not jumping to other or another big company like WCW. Like back in the day when the guys left WWE and went to WCW, vice versa. They're not doing that. They're going to the independent, and they're making these little shows that have 500 people usually. Not all independent shows have that. Some places are lucky to get 100, but... But they're taking, but these promoters who know how to promote professional wrestling, who knows how to draw a great house, five, six, seven hundred people house, what they're doing now is you bring uh, CM Punk on that show, a Neville, Cody Rhodes. I won't say CM Punk, but Cody Rhodes. You're going to tell me Cody Rhodes and with a, a good promoter, you're going to tell me Cody Rhodes isn't going to bring you another 300 fans easily? Another 300 fans, easily. So if you're averaging five, six, seven hundred, let's say 700, you know, just to be nice, because I know a lot of promoters, I know some promoters, but I know a bunch of them are actually drawing over 500 a show. But let's say you're averaging 700. Cody Rhodes come and bring in another 300. That's 1,000 fans. Another 500 fans. Come on, that's 1,200 going to pay for himself. Neville, hot off the WWE TV. Same promoters. They bring a Neville in. Let's say they decide to do, you know, spend a couple bucks and do a Neville versus Cody Rhodes match. You're going to tell me that's not going to uh, draw another thousand? Good promoters now. Good promoters. Guys who know how to go out there and promote these shows and draw fans. I won't get into, you know, what they're all going to do. To promote those fans, but hey, we should talk about that one day. But anyway, you're going to tell me that they can't do that? Good promoters. And see, these workers are smart. They're going to go and find out who are the ones who are drawing houses. And those are the ones they're going to try to work with. Why not? Why not? Ryback tried to do it, but it didn't work for him. I'll be honest there. Because I think he overpriced himself. See, Ryback came off the TV, thought he was, you know, dead going, man. No, he wasn't. He, he overpriced himself. You can't do that. Especially when you got other guys out there who are putting on great matches, number one, and they're not charging as much as you are. I mean, I see this happen a lot of times. These guys come off of TV and they think that they're bigger than who they are and they're not, and they get told nobody's promoters. 
No, nah, bro, you're not worth three thousand. I mean, I'm just being real. You're not worth three grand. You know, I, I mean, I used to deal with this all the time when I would run shows. God wanted such and such, and well, come on, man, you're not even going to sell such and such tickets. Ryback is one of those guys. No disrespect to Ryback, but he's not one of those guys. He's not a Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes was hot when he left the WWE. Neville was hot when he asked for his release. CM Punk was possibly the the best wrestler in the company at the time and had the most buzz in the company at the time when he left. So he can, if CM Punk decided to go out there and take indie bookings, and I know he wouldn't take a lot because I, I, I know a couple of organizations that he would work for, for sure. Let me ask you this, wrestling fans. Ah, great question here I got coming up. Now, with the resurgence of the NWA, uh, backed by my man Billy Corgan and Dave Marquez and those guys, why not? I, I would not be surprised if Daniel Bryan, when he left the WWE in a year, year and a half, whatever, slept in that contract, I wouldn't be shocked if he went back and wrestled in the NWA again. And you're going to tell me that if the NWA with Billy Corgan was able to pay Daniel Bryan, bring him in. You're going to tell me that all eyeballs would not go to the – come on. You want to tell me eyeballs, they're not going to start watching the NWA? If you truly believe that, challenge that. Because I know for sure what they're doing over there with Championship Wrestling of Hollywood. I know what they're doing. You add a Daniel Bryan to that show, it changes everything. And why did I say Daniel Bryan and the NWA? It's because Daniel Bryan is a former NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, we forgot about that. Yes, he is. Former NWA heavyweight championship. So I wouldn't be shocked. I would not be shocked. So you got Daniel Bryan who would go to the NWA or Ring of Honor. Or Ring of Honor. But see, for some reason, I don't... Ring of Honor... It would be a good fit for Daniel, but I could see him taking a challenge on of going to NWA with Billy Corgan backing him up and him saying, okay, let's run. Give me the ball, let's run. And it would be awesome. Tim Storm, the NWA champion, he's a great wrestler. We're really impressed. You know, I was watching some matches of his this past uh, week, and I said, okay, I like the dude. So the NWA can do some things can do some things. You get Daniel Bryan? Yes, it could do some things. So, to close this topic, because I really, really, really didn't get into what Jack Swagger uh, said, but uh, do you really believe the WWE is trying to stomp out these, these smaller, well, actually, they're really not small. <laughs> they're not that small, but yeah, compared to the WWE, yeah. Do you really think they're trying to stomp out these smaller promotions? Because they are putting on great shows. Revolver is an incredible show. Incredible. Incredible show. And I really hope that they do uh, really well, which I believe they will, next week or this Saturday on the 28th. They're really putting on some... uh, some great entertainment over there, and I really believe that they're going to compete with NXT. I think they will. Crowd-wise, I think they will. NXT has a decent following. It's a niche following. You know, when they come to Pittsburgh, they run Stage AE. It's a smaller venue, but it's a, a nice venue. Are they going to do well next week? I hope so. But is Jack Swagger right? I believe he is. But we're going to take a break. And uh, we got some calls on the line, guys. Just hold on. Do the break. 
And uh, when we get back, we're going to talk about this huge show coming up on November 4th at the Uniontown State Theater. Man, I can't wait. I cannot wait. That's November 4th at the Uniontown State Theater. Uh, We're going to talk about that after the break. And, hey, let me know what you think about this Jack Swagger situation. We're going to talk about this again uh, over the next few days um, on Twitter. But, you know, you can tweet me at at Aaron Lester 22. That's A-A-R-O-N-L-E-S-T-E-R. Let me know what you think about that. But you're listening to the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Idiot Radio Network. We'll be right back after this break. Energy Angel Solution. Alternative healing services. Do you need some relaxation in your life? Is your mind feeling sluggish? Does your body hurt? Have you been feeling off balanced and just not centered lately? Energy Angel Solutions LLC offers healing that considers the energy of the whole person, body, mind, and energy for optimal health and wellness. For more information, visit our website at energyangelsolutions.com. Idiot Radio, taking it to the edge. Does your dog or cat need some much-needed attention and pampering? Money Paws, full grooming salon for dogs and cats. Featuring full-service dog and cat grooming, bath and brush, haircuts, nails, ears, teeth, and rear-end cleanup. All done with extra love and attention. It's Money Paws. Schedule an appointment today at 412-207-8250. For all your heating and cooling needs, service, and installation, contact our friends at Complete Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, 412-513-3001. Doesn't your family deserve Complete Comfort? We are back. Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Step on Devereaux here on the Idiot Radio Network. Uh, real quick, just want to let you fans know, next, well, this Thursday, 6 o'clock, we're going to be doing a, dev, a special Devereux Committee, and uh, our guest will be former NWA World Tag Team Champion, one half of the World Tag Team Champions, get this wrestling fans, the Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez. Yes, we're going to have Manny Fernandez this Thursday night, a special edition of the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling. I am going to be having some fun. Yes, talking some old stories with the Raging Bull, but we're going to calm down. Take a deep breath. But okay, I'm working out. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, give us a call, 347-308-8709, and we are going to go to the phones. Caller, you're on a Devereux Committee. What's up? Oh, Devereux. Matt! Yes. Look, Matt. Look, it wouldn't look, be look, look. A, it wouldn't be a typical Sunday without me calling in to check up on you. You know, honestly and truthfully, I want to thank you for calling because my co-host, for some reason, he just uh, he's not showing up. He, I got an email. Oh, I'm still I'm training for the tag tournament, dude. Really, you're I, training on I a can Sunday. Explain, I can explain that. He doesn't want Please to confront do. me. Bud Cassidy is afraid of Marvelous Enterprises. Yep. And Rob Rage, I don't care about Rob Rage one bit. But Bud Cassidy is afraid. He's afraid to confront me on the radio show because he knows I'll out-talk him and make him look bad quite easily. Well, you're going to, um, your team is going to make him look bad on November 4th down at the Yeah, uh, we're not even going, we're not even going to try that hard. It's going to be yeah. easy. I mean, I'm not even – I don't care about this match. I'm looking past this match and going right to the final round. And it then honestly, the plan starts to take effect. I Step like one, tag team titles. Step yeah. two, heavyweight title. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, see, here's the thing, you know, because with me trying to focus on this broadcasting thing and all that, I, I, Jesse Skelton, I don't manage him no more. And he's going to be in a match this week, or excuse me, at this show, against second, fourth, the UWF Heavyweight Championship. And Look, I've had my problem with both of these. I've had both my problem with both these guys. Sick and nearly killed me, if everybody remembers correctly. Yes. And, and 
Marvelous Enterprises never really got their revenge against Riot City. And, oh, that gets me angry. But I want to take out each member of Riot City one at a time so then Sicken doesn't have any friends left when we go and absolutely destroy him. Yeah. <sighs> as, like far as, Jesse, as far as Jesse's concerned, if he would just stay out of my business, he won't get hurt. I mean, he's cheated like four or five times to beat Shane Malice already. Yes, he At has. At least four or five times. Mostly, mostly triple threat matches. The one singles match that Shane and Jesse had, conveniently, I wasn't there for. What a shock. And the person I was there in my place, let's just say she didn't do her job. But, but that title should have been mine, and the title will eventually be mine. It's just it's going to take a little planning. I'm sorry. So, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just, you got, I, 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 look, I'll put it like this. I have no problem. With, I have no problem if you take out Jesse Skelton. I, of course, I have no problem about you taking out sick, and I've never liked the kid anyway. I mean, this dude, seriously, now he's the champion. You see him on Facebook posing with belts. Come on, man. Anyway, but that Jesse Skelton, he has to go, man. He has to go. You know, I'm dead serious. Go ahead. You, you know something? A couple years ago, I put out a bounty on Sicken, and no one ever collected. It's still a $50,000 bounty to whoever collects on it. Hey, 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 hey. And I don't care who collects. Whoever takes them out of wrestling collects the bounty. Even if I might have to put the boots back on and take them out myself. But, you know me, I'd rather not do that. You're retired, man. You're retired, dude. Beaches, that's the life that you're trying to live right now, except for when you have to come up here and make some money. But serious, come on, Matt. Come on. The marvelous lifestyle is what we all dream of. I dream of that lifestyle. I want that lifestyle. So I, I'm pretty sure that you're not going to risk that to go in there and take out them. Man, come on. Seriously. You have You'd be surprised. Here. You'd be surprised what I would do if I'm motivated enough. Not, I'm begging I mean, you not to. I mean, as much as i rather have other people do my dirty work for me, everyone knows I will get in there and wrestle if I have to. No, see, I the thing that scares not me to. about you, and, and what scares me about you is you would actually, you'll you put your life on the line to win a match. I know you. I know you. You got that competitive spirit that I'll be looking up to. You know, I mean, I, I want that spirit because I know I I'm also do it, smarter. But... I'm also smarter than everyone else. And we understand that. That's why I don't understand why you're even thinking even letting it run through your mind that you want to step in a ring against who? The second? Look, 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 look. Let, let me put it to you like this. I wouldn't step into a wrestling ring unless I had a plan. Yeah. I know that. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. What happened? You're right. What, 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 you remember what happened the last time I was supposed to face second? What What happened? Who, who who did I put in my place? Remember? <laughs> well, I've got you a six understand. foot eight, three hundred and eighty pound Russian to take my spot for me. Be honest. He got screwed. You know, UCW they screwed him. It was like they they found the daggone visa uh, situation. They made it. They made the visa situation up. But I won't get into that. But go ahead. I'm, you're right. You can continue. But like I said, November fourth. Oh. That reminds me, before I forget, November 4th, we at Marvelous Enterprises have a very, very special announcement to take place before the match. Can't tell you wait, what whoa. it is right now, but can't oh, tell you what on. it is right now. Then no, no, you got to wait. Got to wait till November 4th. November no. 4th, you'll get this very special announcement that's going to change the face of tag team wrestling. Oh, yeah. Debro, well, I gotta go right now, but I want you to do me a oh. favor and on Thursday tell Manny Fernandez I said hello, and that yes. maybe one of these days I can eventually do business with him. You know what? Ooh, ooh. 
hey, don't give me any ideas because I'll let him know that. I'll let him know that. I've been a big fan of his work for years. Well, as long as we're on the same page of taking out that little bum sick and and Jesse Skelton, hey, dude, I'll work with you on anything, and I will pass along the message. And also tell Justin Bender I said hi, too. Very good personal (laughs) friend. Justin Bender, he's having some fun right now. I hear he's on vacation. But I will truly do that. And I want to thank you, Matt Bish, for joining us. He's the man. Marvelous Matt Bish. Can't wait to see you November 4th at the Uniontown State Theater and Uniontown PA. Thank you, Matt. The pleasure was all yours, I'm sure. Yeah, it was. He's the man. I love that guy. So, I mean, man, see, this is what I mean about Matt. Matt is the man. We should have a segment every week with Marvelous Matt Bish because this man right here, let me tell you, he gives us so much insight. He tells us what's going on in his life. Cause what, he has a great life. I love it. I swear. He's probably one of the funnest guys to ever hang out with. But we won't get into that right now. We'll let him do that himself when he comes back on this show. Wrestling fans, if you want to see my man, Marvelous Matt Bish, and his tag team, well, Marvelous Enterprises, if you want to see these guys beat up on my co-host, who isn't here again, he's supposedly training, yeah, okay, and Rob Rage, oh, goodness gracious. If you want to see Marvelous Enterprises take out those guys, please get your tickets at the Uniontown State Theater or Bradley's Bookstore at the Uniontown Mall, or the Caddy Shack on Dixon Boulevard. That is November 4th, Uniontown State Theater. You, I want to call it UCW so bad, but I can't. It's the UWF. Uh, get your tickets. It's 27 East Main Street, Uniontown, PA. Doors open at 6.30, bell time 7 o'clock. Get your tickets now. We're going to go to a break, and when we come back, oh, my Goodness, I cannot wait. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the TLC pay per view, this thing called predictions. And since Bud Cassidy isn't here, you know what? I'm going to have to do predictions on my own. But it's okay because I'll win either way. Ha 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 ha. Because I'm not going against anybody. But it's okay. Give us a call 347 308 8709. Hey, if you want to predict the pay per view tonight, be my guest because I'm going to beat you too. The 347-308-8709. You're listening to the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Idiot Radio Network. We'll be right back. You're listening to Idiot Radio, taking it to the edge and back. Looking for a creative idea for meetings, business lunches, and special events? Call Spiels on Wheels, food truck, and catering, and take the stress away. For more information, call them at 724-244-9881 or on Facebook at facebook.com slash spielson.wheels. Pizza and Gyro Express. 801 O'Neill Boulevard in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. For menus, coupons, specials, and catering info, visit our website at pizzaandgyroexpress.com. Order online or by phone at 412-672-2182. Don't forget about the lunch buffet and drink every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for just $10. The original Pizza and Gyro Express. Don't settle for anything less. Does your dog or cat need some much-needed attention and pampering? Money Paws, full grooming salon for dogs and cats. Featuring full-service dog and cat grooming, bath and brush, haircuts, nails, ears, teeth, and rear-end cleanup. All done with extra love and attention. It's Money Paws. Schedule an appointment today at 412-207-8250. Oh. We are back, Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Radio Network, and uh, we are, no, 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 we have to wait. We can't do that yet. We're going to let them wait just a little bit more. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, we got some more news here to get through, and I want to you know, talk about this news stuff. See, I like the news. This is real news, not fake news. But anyway, <laughs> but uh not to forget about my man, Triple H. He's going to be replacing Kevin Owens uh, and AJ Styles um, this weekend, tonight, actually, at a house show in Chile. 
And um, rumors were going around that Kevin Owens was sick as well. But Kevin Owens released a statement. He says, I'm not sick. I'm not hurt. My family needed me home. So Kevin Owens will not be in Chile tonight. But I'm pretty sure that I don't want to be there right now myself either. And Triple H probably doesn't want to be there. But you know what? He probably does because Triple H wouldn't come out and do this unless he knew it was needed, number one, and it was going to benefit him. Makes him look good, too. Love Triple H, he's the man. Sometimes. But anyway, um, Nia Jax. Yeah, remember Nia Jax. It's like we were talking about it uh, a couple segments ago about WWE uh, talent just leaving and not wanting to be there anymore. But there was uh, rumors going around that Nia Jax was one of those people. And uh, there was rumors that she was unhappy with her status and uh, that she even went and talked to her cousin, The Rock, to you know, have him help out. And there was rumors that she had left uh, Raw, and or she no-showed Raw, but uh, a lot of those rumors were cleared up, and uh, you know she didn't do that. But she was granted a personal release uh, by management. I guess she had some things going on at home. And the rumors about The Rock interjecting is not true. Just want to let you know it's not true. Now, this is what I'm hearing, but not true. There's anybody that can get some stuff done for you as The Rock. I mean, but the only thing he can't get done right now is getting Roman Reigns over by himself. That's why the Shield is back. But speaking of the Shield, it is prediction time. I love this segment. I swear I love predicting these matches, especially when I'm right. And I was right the last pay-per-view. I beat Bud Cassidy, and Bud Cassidy hasn't been on the show since because he was afraid to admit that he lost to Devereaux. We're going to get into that next time he's on here. But let's get into these TLC predictions. Music queued up, producer. Thank you. Okay. How are you feeling about TLC tonight? I'm feeling, actually, I'm going to watch it live because I, t- I told you earlier why. Um, AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Kurt Angle. Am uh, I walking dead fan? Somewhat. I'm more of a football fan over the two Walking Dead and, uh, and professional wrestling, but I'm going to watch this pay-per-view tonight, and I hope you do too, on the WWE Network. Um, but let's get into the prediction. Sasha Banks taking on Alicia Fox. I'm going with Sasha Banks. Yeah. That's going to be a win for me. Ben Balor. No, no, you know what? I'm going to wait. We're going to wait for that one. But let's go with uh, the women's title. Women's title. Uh, Alexa... Bliss champion taking on legend Mickey James. And thinking about this match, see, do I believe the WWE? Um, I'm just going to go with Mickey James. I believe they're going to put the title back on her. I think that she's going to get the title. Um, WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Now, hey, my man Enzo. Yeah, Enzo. Okay, you proving those doubters wrong, bruh. Appreciate that. Uh, mm, WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Kalisto, he is the champion. Ooh, unfortunately, taking on Enzo, and like I said, Enzo's proving them doubters wrong, and I think he's getting the belt back. Um, tag team match: Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander taking on Gallagher and Kendrick. D. Brian Kendrick. Uh, I'll go with Swan and Alexander. Yeah, I really don't care too much about that match, but I'll go for it. I'll go with those two guys. Um, Asaka versus Emma. Emma, I'm not going to talk about that too much because who cares? Okay, let's get into the big matches. Yeah, can't wait. Ben Balor taking on AJ Styles. Now, this match, to me, has match of the year written all over it. I just, man, this match right here is going to be incredible. I'm going to say it's probably going to go 20 minutes at least. Um, when it was one, two, three, four, or seven, eight matches on the sh- card, I think this match is going to go 20 minutes. I really, truly believe 20 minutes. Um, if it goes 20 minutes, whew, man. Okay, so if I was looking at this from a real fight perspective, 
who would win, AJ Styles or Finn Balor, I still wouldn't know. So it's kind of hard for me to predict this match, but man, this one's going to be an incredible match. This one is going to be incredible. Um, I'm going to go with... Sheesh. AJ Styles. I don't know why. I don't know how. But I just... I believe Styles is going to win this match. Um, I, man, I mean... You know, we're going to talk about this match next week. We're going to get into detail about this match next week. So, um, yeah, when this match is over, we'll talk about that next week. I, I just, eh, I don't know, man. Anyway, moving on through to the main event, uh, five on three handicap match, tables, ladders, and chairs handicap match. Um, got Kane, Braun Strowman, Cesaro. Seamus and the Miz. Yes. Best talent in the WWE right now, in my opinion. All around talent. Taking on Kurt Angle, Dane Ambrose, and Seth Rollins. Now, I'm not going to call these guys the shield, but I'll just call them Kurt Angle, Ambrose, Rollins. And this match, easy. This match is going to be so easy for me. I am taking the Miz taking a Mrs. team now here's why i'm taking a Mrs. team because i have i was uh, talking on facebook the other day with a friend and uh we just both believe that kurt angle's turning heel tonight i don't know why but we both believe it maybe it's because we can see it and maybe it's because we, I just don't think that the WWE is really going to waste his first match back in a five-on-three handicap match at TLC. As a matter of fact, it's a tables, layers, and chairs match. Now, forget that. I just don't see the WWE doing that. Um, Kurt Angles had a lot of injury issues in the past. Do I believe that the WWE would actually risk his health in this type of match? So I don't believe he's even going to do uh, any major bumps. He might not even get in the ring. I can see Kurt Angle being taken out before the match happens. I could see Miz and crew taking out Kurt Angle before the match happens and Kurt Angle and making it a five on two match. You know, they suckered in the fans to, to, uh, to tune in to see this match and see Kurt Angle's return. Now Kurt Angle gets taken out WWE to get what they want. The fans are pissed off, but they wouldn't be pissed off if Roman Reigns happened to show up. He's out. So, I'm going to go with Mr. Raj. Yeah. So, that means I'm going to most definitely be feeling good because he's going to win. And I am a big Miz fan. Tonight, I'm going to be celebrating. I'll have a few drinks for my, on my boy to Miz because he is the man. Now, that's a good pay-per-view. Looks pretty good. I said the big matches, AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and uh, the Kalisto and Enzo match. I think that's going to be a good match, too. So um, I hope you watch the pay-per-view tonight, TLC on the WWE Network. And our wrestling fans, we're going to head out of here. You are listening to the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Idiot Radio Network. Thank you for joining us.